Hello, hello, and welcome back to Girl We Gotta Talk. I'm your host, Elena Jakes. Welcome back to another episode. Today, I am joined by the TJ Winger. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Oh my God, of course. We're so happy to have you. <laughs> this has been a very highly requested um, episode. Uh, TJ and I have been in a, what seems like an eternity of a relationship, five whole years. Five plus, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, five plus years together and a lot of that has been long distance so we've gotten a lot of questions over the years of how have you guys maintained that relationship especially through long distance um and tj has come on i think once or twice and we've briefly talked about it but this is going to be like a full-blown episode on number one how to maintain a healthy relationship how to do long distance because that is definitely not an easy task and then just answering all of your questions about it all so I'm excited this has been like very anticipated and I'm excited to just like jump in and TJ's pretty good at advice too so I think that'll be kind of fun um to hear what he has to say on things so let's jump in I guess yeah wow hyping me up I hope I don't mess this up don't mess it up okay I'll try I guess we can like start with a quick intro for those of you who don't really know who we are or if you're new here, um, we can kind of introduce like who we are, how we met, how we started dating, all that fun stuff. So how long have we been dating? We've been dating for five. It'll be five and a half years, July 10th. July 10th. Um, yeah, once upon a time, there was this girl in a castle. Her name was Elena. No. Um, Why don't you say, okay, so we, we met in college, but mm-hmm. I, want, I want to hear like how you tell the story. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. So, yeah, we were both comm majors, but we didn't really realize that. Um, we had some overlapping experiences and moments with one another when I joined the radio station and you joined the newspaper, and you caught my attention, and you've told me I caught yours. So, um, yeah, I guess we, you know, we're, we noticed one another, and then one day it kind of all came together in my mind where I realized you were in a class of mine, and I was like, oh my God, that's that girl. So, I basically fell for you three different times. So, congratulations, you win. <laughs> Um, I think you didn't know who I was each time. <laughs> yes, and that's what made it all the more okay. romantic that I fell for you all three times. And right. then I realized you were the same person. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Yeah. So I knew I had to have you, you know? So, uh, yeah, I used to just start to go out of my way. I would, like, leave the calf or whatever early, get to my class early, stay longer, linger around. So that way I could, like, hang out with you after class before a meeting or, you know, whatever I could basically get. Um, go work in the studio because I knew you were going to be there that day or you were shooting or whatever the case may be. So, uh, yeah, and then slowly I wore you down, um, asked you out on a date. Uh, I guess before that we hung out at New Year's. That was our first, like, experience hanging out as more than just classmates, Mm -hmm. and that went well in my opinion. So um, then I got the chance to take you on a date, went to a basketball game, and that was uh, January 10th, 2018, and the rest is history. Crazy. That feels like so long ago. It was. And Steak and shake and those Wizards like basketball versions game. of us, I feel like are so different than like the people that we are now, which is so crazy to think about. Yeah, you've taken away my innocence and I was thinking back, you know, like we met when I was what, twenty? Yeah, yeah. So like in our minds then, like in college you feel so old, like mm-hmm. you feel like you kind of have everything together, but we were still very much like young, trying to figure everything out. And um, still, like, growing into the people that we are today. I think we're still growing. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting when you're in a long relationship, like, to look at the people that you were when you first started dating to the people that you are now. Um, I think we've changed a lot, but I think we've also, like, really stayed, like, the same, especially, like, in a relationship. No, yeah. I mean, things... I mean, I just think naturally people grow up and change a little bit. But I think at our core, we're still the same people. Mm -hmm. We still feel the same about each other. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess, like quickly to run through like the last five years like a quick like synopsis um so I was a grade above you um we're the same age right like I'm not like cougar on the prowl not a cougar um I'm literally two weeks older than you but okay (laughs) oh she's on the hunt so I graduated in 2019 and TJ still had a full year to do so that was I think like our a very interesting like test for us because like we had been very used to seeing each other every day in school like yeah we had classes together we were in all these clubs like tj was saying the newspaper the radio station and we were just like around each other 24 7 and when we weren't doing stuff for like class or our clubs and stuff 
we were like, oh, can we just hang out just us? Like, yeah. it felt like we were together 24-7 because, like, our lives were so intertwined. And then when we weren't having to work together, we were like, can we just hang out and be a yeah. couple? So it was literally, like, all, together all the time, which was really great. Um, and we had to find, like, boundaries with that, too, because we didn't want to be, like, that couple that were, like, up each other's asses. And so we found, like, a good balance. Totally. Um, but then once I graduated, that was like a complete shift of like, shit, now I'm not going to be with him all the time. How are we going to do this distance of like three hours? Like I went back home um, once I graduated and TJ was still like three hours away at school. And I would say that that was a hard transition for us to try and figure out. You were still just as busy as we were when I was there with school. So like right. you were never home. Like you were always trying to do something. So for me, post grad, I had like a weird job. I just remember like always waiting by my phone and like, when is he gonna text me? When is he gonna call me? Like, it was a very interesting time. Um, but then, I don't know, we figured it out. We like talked about it and um, COVID weirdly helped because then you came home. <laughs> yeah. I was more readily available. Yeah, but. Like, what was your perspective on that year? Because that was definitely, like, a new transition, a new kind of phase for our relationship. Yeah. No, and, I mean, it's it's definitely different perspectives because I was so busy. Everything went by, like, so quick. And, like, to me, I wasn't really – I mean, I was thinking about it, but I was also, like, trying to make sure I had all my other tasks, you know, done, you know, mm-hmm. as, you know, editor-in-chief and – sports director and all that stuff and then broadcast so like that also made it tricky because you know working in sports you basically had like three or four jobs on top of being a student yeah yeah, and on top of a social life Uh, yeah what little one maybe i had but um but specifically the broadcast because sports i mean they're those are leisure events for everyone else so they are they're on weekends they're on nights so anytime you would try to make the effort to come see me or i was trying to figure out when i could go see you that was always tricky because it's like, well, sorry, I got soccer this Saturday or sorry, I got baseball broadcast Tuesday and Friday. I can't, you know, whatever. So that always made it really tricky and uh, yeah, it definitely kept me busy, but it also kept us like at a, uh, uh, like an arm's length away from one another, which always kind of sucked. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we may do, you know, FaceTimes, you know, is you just got to learn to appreciate that and when you get to text and talk and all those sorts of things and, mm-hmm. you know, communicate effectively and come up with a plan and, you know, a course of action for when you're going to see each other next. And, you know, even while I was in college and I had those games, you know, there still were breaks and there still were days you could come and visit and, you know, summer and, you know, winter break, spring break, I could go see you and things like that. So we just, you know, we battled through. Yeah. I think also like with the communication side of it, we are big FaceTimers. Like, I think for the most part, we text pretty much like all day. It's like here and there of like, hey, what are you doing? Like, what do you, you know, like, what's up? How's the day going? That, yeah, like, how's your day been? Like, stuff like that. And we just like up, update each other on like day to day stuff. But then FaceTimes are when we get to like really have conversations and like talk. And TJ's making a face at me because like I talk a lot on FaceTime and he listens most times, right? Is that what you're going to say? No comment. Uh huh. No, but that is, like, a time that we can actually, like, see each other face-to-face, debrief, and, like, it is nice. Um, So we're definitely, like, a FaceTiming couple, I would say, Mm -hmm. and um, kind of, like, you know, planning out, like, hey, like, do you think on, like, Thursday, like, you'll have time after your broadcast, like, FaceTime, and, like, we kind of, like, tried to do that as best we could, but it was definitely a hard transition, because that was the first taste of, like, shit, this is going to be a distance thing. Yeah, because, I mean, we had that with summer break, in specific, while we were in school, and it was, like, like, it was, like, three months, two and a half, three months, where it was, like, oh, my gosh, and it was also, like, all right, well, I'll just come up and see you, and, you know, whatever. Yeah, no, my senior year was weird, but then, you know, COVID happened, and, you know, I went back home, which... It was a little easier to come and see you, but also it came with the risk of like, all right, are you like, safe? like, are you safe? <laughs> Have you been around people, especially with like your grandparents and things like yeah, that? When we did hard. try to do stuff, it was like, TJ, are you like, you like holding up your end of the bargain? It's like, yeah, I am. I don't see people. So. Yeah. But so that kind of gave us a little bit of a, it kind of gave us a reprieve so it almost speak, like, from that one It year. almost like balanced out like not seeing each other as much because then it was like when we did hang out, we were kind of just like secluded and just the two right, of us because right. we were so nervous about and getting sick. it was just sick. like us or your family or yeah, just like the this, two of us. Yeah, it was like so, our yeah. two safe circles were our yeah, homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, we didn't talk about when we were in college and you had that internship. That was kind of a hard time too because it was six hours away and I saw you yeah. twice in one summer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think... During during my internship, yeah, and then I saw you one last time before school started after the internship ended. So yeah, three times in a three month span, that really sucked. But yeah, 
Yeah, and I mean, you know, the, the cliche is distance makes the heart fond, and uh, I mean, I think that's true to an extent, but it also just tests, you know, the uh, the strength and the core of your relationship and how willing you're, uh, how willing you are to to make it work and you know, how much of a fighter maybe you are. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, so seven hours apart. I remember when we had the wedding in Pittsburgh. That was three and a half hours away from y'all. So I spent three and a half hours in a car to then leave the next day, seven and a half hours back down to Moorhead City. And I was like, if I see another road in my life, it'll be too soon. Mm -hmm. But those are the, you know, those are the things that you have to do and things that if it matters to you, you're willing to do. I think with that period of time too, when you had that internship down there, that was something that we that really tested us and I think we passed in a good way because mm-hmm. that schedule was so chaotic and you were basically working like 24 hours a day like yeah. insane hours um, that you would always call me on your drive back from the game so it would be like 1am and you'd be yeah. like if you're still awake like I'm gonna call you and you would call me on your drive home and you would like talk to me about everything I'd like tell you about my day I'd be like literally laying in bed about to crash <laughs> and you're like can I call you? And I'm like, yes, because like that showed me that you were like making the effort to talk to me still after you had had just like probably a horrible day or just a long day in general. And you were still like prioritizing me. It may have been like late, but I still saw like, okay, he's making the effort. Yeah. Yeah. What was the internship required requirement? 120 hours or something like that. I more than doubled it that summer. You like had 900 hours or something. (laughs) Yeah. An unpaid internship too, which also made it tricky because like you would come down and it's like, I'd love to take you to this bar, but, but like I have, zero I have dollars. I, you worked one game to help us out that summer, and you made more that one day than I did that so entire I, summer. <laughs> I got a call. I'm like, fi- I'm finally getting to see TJ this summer. Yeah, you're coming down to see. I'm me driving again. down the six hour trip by myself. So excited! I'm like in the home stretch. I think I have like an hour left mm-hmm. of the drive. TJ calls me. I'm like, oh my god, hi babe. Like I'm so excited. He's like, hey, do you think you could work this game? I'm just like, doing sound. Yeah, you were doing, doing like the, the audio. Player, so basically yeah, when like the baseball ups. players walk up, they have like that little walk up song. Like that would have been my that was gonna be my job. And I was like, I first of all had like so much anger in me. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I just drove all this way and I have to work. And then I like thought to myself, like, okay, this guy's not even getting paid for this, and I'm probably gonna get paid for this. So like might as well just like get a couple bucks. Well, additionally, my thinking was she's gonna be at the game anyway. So it's and either watch a game and do nothing or sit next to me it's and Exactly. And then you were like, you'll get to sit next to me in the press box. Like I know it's not ideal, but like at least we'll be able to like be together. And then that right there, I was like, fine, I'll do it. Like I just drove six hours. Why would I sit at a baseball game by myself? Even yeah. though I was going to do that originally. Yeah. Well, um, you could have hit the bar. So, you know, there were pros and cons. Make money, spend money, get a little bit of a Right. Buzz, so, but yeah, so. Um, but yeah, you made like 40 bucks that night, and that was $40 more than I made that exactly. entire summer. So, yeah. thanks. But. Red winner. <laughs> those were all just like really good tests, I think, especially towards the beginning of our relationship, because like all we were used to was seeing each other all the time. Like the distancing yeah. was definitely something new for us. Yeah. Um, who would have thought we would have been. Oh, yeah. Doing it the rest of our relationship, but um, <laughs> but I will say like I, I can at least speak to this from like my, my family standpoint. That was something that like that internship, and then like when I was still in college and you were doing your own thing, like that meant a lot. It showed a lot to my family that like we were still like pushing through. It wasn't mm. just like the convenient relationship thing where it's like oh well yeah they dated throughout college because they were next to each other. And it's like, oh, no, they're still doing it. So that's something that my family still says to me. And they're like, well, I mean, y'all made it work from seven hours apart. I mean, y'all wow. figured this out. So, yeah. yeah. So um, I hope it had that same effect on other people, showing that we were being legit about it. Yeah. So. There might be a question of, like, well, why did you continue to do long distance once you graduated? Um, that's a good question for you to answer. <laughs> <laughs> so you graduated in 2020, yeah. um, a year after I had, and walk me through or like I guess walk listeners through like sure, yeah, your yeah. job status and what that all looked like yeah, yeah yeah so I started working for a company in Richmond and that allowed me to kind of get my toes in the water freelancing with play by play and also like play by play is not a full time job often at many different schools a lot of people will just use students like Longwood did with me mm-hmm. um, or they'll pay somebody like next to no money and that's their full time job and it's you know treated as you're paying your dues like if you want to work at Michigan one day if you want to work at you know Clemson well this is the this is the shit you have to eat so you know it's not necessarily the the 
the craziest of full-time jobs. So my thinking was, all right, well, I'll do something else in the meantime that you know keeps me sharp with graphic design and maybe gets me into the world of marketing and other career paths while also giving me the flexibility of doing broadcasting. So I did that in Richmond right after graduating. I was doing play-by-play for the A10 and VCU and Longwood and all that stuff. Um, obviously, this was like just after COVID, so sports were still a little light, but you know there were still gigs to be had. And then I got a call to go and work at the University of Lynchburg, took that. Uh, I thought it was a great opportunity. I'm glad to do it. And it was one of the rare jobs where like I was making more than a lot of people I knew mm-hmm. who had been in the field for a like a decade. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, yeah, like the salary, which, which still was not crazy. Like I still needed more money, but comparing that to people that I knew in the field, I was like, whoa, okay, well, all right. Especially considering this is D3 school, that caught me off guard. That and then the resources and all that stuff. But ultimately, you know, things didn't, you know, I mean, not that they didn't work out, but we just kind of headed in different directions and I wanted to come back to Richmond. Yeah, so basically what you're saying is like the jobs are what kind of like separated us for a bit and we were both super focused on getting the best opportunity at this time. Like I, I had a job out of college that wasn't super great and I took a new job in marketing that kept me in Northern Virginia and they kept teasing the idea. Obviously, this was like COVID. So they kept teasing the idea that we were going to keep going, you know, back to the office. Like in three months, we're going back. So it would be three months and I'd be like, okay, like are we going back? And they'd be like, it's going to happen next month. And they kept teasing it like that. Yeah. So in my in my head, I'm like, I have to be here because I'm technically hired as an in-office employee. Yeah, yeah. Um, meanwhile, TJ is like, obviously working towards his goals in Richmond and then ultimately like finding the job in Lynchburg. And, um, we both, I think we didn't even really have a conversation about it at first. I think we just are both people that are driven and we both wanted like the best opportunities and we wanted to just like work towards our goals. And I think that was just sort of like an understanding that we both had at the beginning. Like I never really questioned him when he was like, I'm going to work in Richmond and I'm going to move there and I'm going to do this. I was like, cool. And I'm going to do this in Nova and I'm, you know, like it just kind of wasn't really a conversation. We both just were kind of the same way about it. And I think we just both knew what that was going to entail. And that was going to entail like distance and that was going to entail driving and like (laughs) making visits to each other and planning things out. But like, we didn't really think that we just kind of were like, this is what we have to do and we're going to do it. Yeah. I mean, it just wouldn't make sense to like upend the potential career path that one of the two of us might have had like who knows like if I was like no you're coming to Richmond or whatever and that like took you away from a great opportunity that might have Mm -hmm. blossomed and ultimately did blossom with you being up there and whatnot with your current job so and then vice versa like who knows what could have played out here yeah and I think like if one of us had said like I won't be in this relationship if you don't move with me like that wouldn't have gone well like I think if I had been like you need to come to Nova right now or we're breaking up or you would have said that to me like we would not be together because I don't yeah it doesn't really match anything that we've done so yeah that would have been really weird if you had said that to me or if I had said that to you yeah like I just don't think that that's fair Mm -hmm. and if like you're in a relationship where maybe like something like this is about to happen where you've you know you've graduated and like you and your significant other looking for jobs I think it's definitely cool to be looking for jobs in the same area if like that's kind of what you want but if opportunities are coming along that are just simply not in the same place, it's okay yeah. to take those opportunities. Yeah, and especially with like, you know, play by play is a niche job too. So like that's I probably am the reason that it ended up yeah, happening I would because say it's that, a weird, you know, it you go where the jobs are. And we talked about that. We were like, if you had a corporate job, like you could have done anything in Nova right, or right, you know. Right. It's your job is a little bit more specific to where you need to be and it's right. just that's just how that works. But but I, but I also think that like when you're in your early 20s, it just makes sense to try to find those chances. Now, if yeah. you're in like early 40s and you've been doing the same thing and you kind of know you're ready to settle down or, or whatever, just say, you know, different situations, different context, then that's a different conversation. But I just think where we were, ultimately, we kind of played it the right way. I was going to say the same thing. I think when you're young like that, like it would be stupid to not take opportunities. Like yeah. you, like right now, we're now shifting, which we'll get to in a little bit. We're now shifting to the, the chapter of like, I think we're done doing the whole distance thing like and now luckily like my job is remote and I'm able to do whatever I want in terms of like where I want to live um and so that's making this whole thing a little bit easier but when you're young like I just think that you should be focusing on yourself and I think it's great to be in a relationship and we luckily found the balance of like giving each other our all while also like pursuing dreams and pursuing like what we wanted to. Yeah. Um, I mean, we went to school for four years that like we had been striving for X, Y, and Z. And like, we wanted to do that when we graduated, we wanted yeah. to 
reach our full potential. And I think we were both very supportive of each other when doing that. So, um, I I think think, like you're young, like you might as well like find what makes you happy. And I don't think you should, I don't know. Yeah. And I mean, we also have like our entire lives ahead of us. So for the last two years, I've been able to have like the quiet time and you know, (laughs) (laughs) I'm playing, I'm playing, but no, I got to meet new people here and and make new connections and all that. And then you got the chance to live with your best friends for a couple of years. And like, that's going to be stuff that you, you know, fingers crossed, tell kids about, you know, one day where it's like, Oh dude, those two years where I got to live with, Natalie and Rachel and Emily and my, you know all that was awesome that was like a dream come true and if I, you know imagine me being the asshole being like no arms crossed that you can't do that you have to live with yeah. me that would have been just such a dick and move. I will say like I remember having the conversation with you of like I think I'm gonna move in with them because that could have been a turning point of like okay I think I'm gonna move in I'm, I'm like I'll come here when you were working in Lynchburg like mm-hmm. I'll come and I'll just like work from home and I don't know anybody but like I'll just be here like yeah. I think if I had done that like our relationship would have been a lot different and I'm glad that I I mean it still sucked and it made us have more years of distance but at the end of the day like that was a decision that I had to make for myself and I'm so happy I did that and like yeah I'm gonna have all these great memories looking back and like being able to live with my friends and I I think that that was just the best decision for me and I think it worked out and now I think we're just both in the spot of like, let's fucking do it. Like, let's yeah. just do it. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Pump's been primed. Now we're ready to take the next step. Yeah. So I think we should just jump into the questions because I think this will let's just kind of lead us yeah. into more conversation. There are a lot of really good questions and thank you guys for submitting them. And thank you for some of you guys that ended up resubmitting them um, because I thought I lost all the questions, but we got them. First question, was there anything that you that surprised you or that you enjoyed about a long-distance relationship? Hmm. Kind of a twofold. That surprised or enjoyed... Well, I will say, like, one thing that you can take as, like, a, a positive is, like, it feels like every time you see that other person, it's, like, kind of an event. Mm. And it's like, oh, Elena and I... St. Patrick's Day, we're going out and we're going to do that and that's going to be so fun and, oh my gosh, I don't get to do that in Lunchburg or vice versa. It's like, she's coming down here and we're going to go on a hike. We're going to go do that thing we've always wanted or I'm going to take her to that place that just opened, you know, whatever. So it feels like, especially if you attach at least one, like, event or thing to do with that trip, it kind of makes it feel like a special love. Oh my God, this is so fun. It's almost like opening a Christmas gift every few weeks. Mm-hmm. So that's that's one positive you could take out of it. Um, yeah, no, I think that's a good one. I also think I've enjoyed, um, I mean, there are definitely parts and days where I'm like, God, like, why doesn't he just live here? And like, why isn't he experiences experiencing this with me? But I also think that I've enjoyed a little bit of like independence. That, su- that surprises me because, um, so I just doubled that, but I, I feel like I say this all the time, like when I'm with you I always feel like so codependent like sometimes especially because I think that we're not used to it so like when I am around you I'm like can you hand me that even though it's like right next to me (laughs) and um I like forget that like I'm an independent woman but when I but for real like when I am by myself like I really do feel like the sense of independence and I feel like I've really grown into myself because of that um so I've kind of like liked that and that's also in, in a way surprised me um I don't know if that's a good answer, but no, it's just the first answer. thing I thought of. Um, okay, how do you make your partner feel appreciated either in person or from a distance? Mm, you should probably answer this one. You're probably better at it than I am. Can I answer it as like how I feel appreciated by you? Sure, you? that sounds great to me. <laughs> Let's go um, with that one. I feel like you make me feel appreciated by like... Okay, so this is something we always joke about now um, because I apparently do this a lot. I, if I'm like drinking with my friends, I will like get home from like you know a night out with everybody or whatever, and I like it, I drunk and Facetime him. Like I drunk Facetime him. She's got a right eye looking left or left eye Shut looking right. Up. But I like loved at the end of the night because he's not there. Like I love to like, oh my god, I want to tell you about my night. I want to see you. I want to say hi. Like whatever. But. I appreciate something about him is that like nine times out of ten he's gonna pick up the phone but even if I'm not drunk like if I'm FaceTiming him like he'll pick up the phone and he always makes me feel heard um and like respected and like I just feel like sometimes when I am you know alone all day or I'm with my friends or whatever it is like at the end of the day like I want to talk to my boyfriend 
and he never makes me feel like a burden or um, annoying. Like I, if I want to FaceTime him or call him real quick, like he's always like there to listen. So that's really nice. And I always feel appreciated from a distance in that sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, same, so thank but you. Uh, yeah, well, you're welcome. I could definitely <laughs> do more because you're like the queen of like small acts of kindness. Uh, you, you used to do it more, but like that, I'm just, is not me put, throwing you under the bus or anything <laughs> like that, but like you used to leave these little notes. And I remember one day I had this like track meet and it was like the championship for the conference or whatever. So I was like literally at the school from like sun up till sundown. I was like there, like literally when the sun went up at like 6 a.m., didn't come home till like 9, 10 o'clock. It was crazy. And you had like gotten like ice cream. Instacarted the man. I was like, oh, I'm about to fucking destroy this pint. <laughs> but oh, yeah. it was just like a little small thing that you did. And there's plenty of other stuff. And I mean, I don't have many eventful things happen in my life, but the when Easter I do. The Easter basket. The Easter basket, another small Because you had to work kindness. on Easter and That's I felt right. really bad. So I like hid an Easter basket when I had visited last. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I was like, hey, I FaceTimed you. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I think I forgot. A thing under the yeah, sink. Yeah, can you check under the sink for me? And then it was like Is a... my shampoo there? Yeah, something Easter like that. basket with a bunch of candy and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you know, you're the queen of like small acts of kindness and it's stuff that I should be, probably do, do more, but we speak different love languages, so. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't have a whole lot that goes on in my life that's like super eventful and I want to talk about, but when I do, you're a very good listener, so. That's also a big thing, I think, that I listen to you and you listen to me and th- just feeling like you have somebody who actually takes an interest in your life, like even if you're like you're the most popular and like you're the center of like that friend group or whatever it's just like nice to have another person in that intimate you know uh, relationship where it's like this person is prioritizing me mm-hmm. so uh yeah what was the question yeah that was good yeah sure um <laughs> wait you just mentioned love languages and we had a question that says what are your love languages and how do, how do you utilize them uh we talk about this probably once a week <laughs> Because I'll do something for Elena, and she's like, what are my love languages? I think I'm... I think I'm all of them, but I... <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, in, in reality, we all are. Kind of, Because right? it's it's an act of love, and we all appreciate that feeling, right? Yeah. Your main two, physical touch. Yeah. You're a big hugger. Yes, I love a hug. Yeah. Body rubs, massage. Yeah. Yeah. She calls hugs fuel. Because Which it we literally did, fuels and you. And you know what? We didn't even put that together for years. Like, yeah, and then we Especially heard about doing distance, I was yeah. like, ugh, like I just feel, you know, when you're just, I Deprived. don't know, maybe this is just me, but like I had, you know, for example, like I wouldn't see him for like three weeks. I felt like I was like missing something. Like I just needed, like I felt like lonely. Not really, but like my body felt like lonely. Like I just felt like I'm missing like another half of me. I need to be like fueled up, which was like, the second I would like get to his house and he hugged me, I just like instantly felt better. Like it was like, so we started calling it like fuel. Yeah. Like his hug was like a, was like fuel for me. It was so weird. I don't fucking know. It was weird. The but second then we one, kind of pieced it together of like, oh, yeah. my love language must be physical touch because the second that you hug me, I feel like at peace. Yeah. So. And like even now when we're just like watching that, I'll just like put my hand on you and you're like, oh, dang. Oh, yeah. Like your so hand warm. on my leg or my knee. Like. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hugs or like, yeah, and cuddles then you start, or something. Yeah, and then you start putting your feet in my face and you tell me to rub, and then I get the hand. I love so. a massage, like a foot massage, <laughs> shoulder massage. Um, yeah. Your second one's probably tougher because, like, acts of kindness. You love a small little gesture, like when I open the door for you. I love a gesture. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You love Which a you gesture. do. You're, but I think I like that because you do it. So. Yeah. Quality time though, because we, you know, we love a good like movie date, or we love a good like let's go out to dinner, let's yeah, go on a I walk. Love, I love yeah. quality time. You're yeah. big. You like quality time. I'm like, ooh, yeah, I do love that. Yeah. Uh, words of affirmation. I don't really need words of affirmation. But I still give them to you. Yeah. yeah. Because you know what? That's yours. Yeah. So you give it to me because that's what you want. Yeah, that's probably um, my biggest one. Yeah, that you're definitely time. words of you like you like. Yeah, you like words of affirmation, like reassurance or like kind words and um, yeah. And then probably quality time. And quality time for sure. Big quality time guy. Yeah. Big quality time relationship over yeah, here. Yeah, let's be buddies. What else? What are the other love languages? Acts of service. Acts of service. I mean, yeah. Like, it's fine. Yeah. I like Easter baskets. Like, you're good. No, that's like, that's gifts. Oh, gifts. Acts right, of right. service is like, you're taking the trash out. The, the, you're the like doing thing. things yeah, yeah, for, yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Good. Gifts are cool too, but. Yeah. I think my main, I think our main ones is, is quality time though. Yeah. And then your physical touch on words of affirmation. Yeah. yeah. Cool. 
Um, how do we utilize them? I think we just like know them and so then we do it. Yeah, I take you, advantage of your strengths and I totally manipulate yeah. you. I get what I want out of it. No, of course. Um, she wants physical touch. I need something out of her, so I'm going to give her a hug. <laughs> what? Okay, next question. What was something that you had to overcome early on in the relationship? Ooh. Oh, her clinginess, her neediness. Oh, just you all of it. You think you're so funny. <laughs> Things to overcome. Hmm. Well, I mean, I think every relationship has to find that like balance of like time management so to speak like you need your girls nights you need your hangouts times with one another so like that's a natural line that every i think every couple needs to walk yeah other hmm. we we have weird hours like with media and stuff like that just like even when we were in college it was like you were in edit suite till like 11 o'clock and it was just like yep well she's got to do what she's yeah like do. i think early on it was like scheduling and then balancing our lives with one another which is what you're saying yeah yeah. and then i would have broadcasts on a saturday and sunday and it's like yeah. all right so you never punk yeah yeah um i'm trying to think like not to like change the question but like anything that we had, had to overcome like in the last like three years other than distance other than distance. Well, yeah. I mean, also work schedules because there was a time where I was, you know, during COVID, like sports were obviously few and far between, but I was like working baseball tournaments. So I would work basically like 6 a.m. till whatever time, Thursday through Sunday. Mm-hmm. So because of that Friday nights, I was going to sleep at like 9 o'clock to get up and go work the next day. But that was your time to like shine. <laughs> yeah. And thrive. And, when oh. I, and then we would get to yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday where I was a little lighter and... You had work. You had to go to bed at a time, and it's like, oh man, it sucks. So, very different schedules. There. Yeah, I think like trying to figure out schedule, like scheduling and um, balancing out like two different lives. Yeah. Then as our careers have picked up, you know, it's like it's added other complications and more scheduling. You know, like our whole relationship, through. I feel like is just like lo- looking at a calendar. Yeah. How often do we look at a calendar in a week? Uh, Probably like 12 times. Yeah, I was about to say at least 10 times. Like I've, so I've been visiting you it's more since than, it Monday. It averages more than one time a day. We're recording, I've been visiting you since Monday. We're recording this on a Thursday. I think we looked at the calendar like five different times already. I think we did five times yesterday. Damn. How do you handle arguments and fights? Um, okay, so I will say we've probably only had like two fights and over five years. I will say we handle fights differently because okay. I am very much a like, I need 30 minutes to an hour to fucking yes. leave me alone. I need to calm down. <laughs> I am, I still have a lot of like athlete in me where I'm very competitive and like the heat of the moment, I get riled up. So I need like half an hour to an hour to be like, calm down. It's okay. Take a deep breath. Don't say anything you'll regret or whatever. Yeah. You always are like, I don't want to say anything I don't mean. I just need to like breathe for a second. Yeah. Um, whereas I have to talk about it in that moment. <laughs> I have to like, we have to squash it right the fuck now. There have been times where you and I get in the spats right before bed and you're like, I cannot go to sleep. Yeah. I, we, have to talk. Talk to we have to talk. Um, and that's like good or bad. Like we have to talk about it. Like whatever. Um, it's just fun. But like, we really don't fight. Like, yeah. I mean, we sometimes will like maybe bicker about something dumb, but it's, we really don't have arguments, like big arguments or big yeah. fights and um, cause I think we get to the root of it before it becomes that. So like, even if there was an issue, like we're already talking about it and it's not, it's like already downplayed because it's not, we're not letting it get to the extreme. Yeah. Um, it's like symbolic of like how we communicate in our relationship. I think we are very good communicators and we've really prioritized our communication. No calm majors, right? But I also think that comes with being long distance. Like, we're such good communicators yeah. because, like, we've had to be. Are you telling me that you're going to move in and start fighting me? No. Potentially. Even when we're together, we don't really. No, like, The we only don't. thing that comes close is you don't like how I organize things in my kitchen. I don't like how you organize things in your kitchen. But once how do you we get organize into, things in your kitchen? You don't have that many things. And it's pretty neat and tidy. Yeah, but then there, there are times where you move things around. And I'm like, why are you doing that? You're know, like, because it makes more sense to be here. And I'm like, but why? Like your cutting boards in a drawer? Sure. Like that. That stuff. might be. That That's like might, the only thing. That could maybe be one of your examples, potentially. But like stuff like, yeah, we just don't, I don't know. We don't really yeah. argue. We don't really fight. Like it's just. Easy going. Yeah. yeah. But I think if, if you are one of those couples that like does fight a lot, just try to get to the root of it before it becomes. Yeah. 
the word fight. Like, I think if there's, like, a problem that one of us has with one another or, like, you know, a situation that we want to, like, talk about, we'll just, like, calmly talk about it and we figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I also think, like, the acknowledgement of, like, this may not be necessarily the healthiest thing for you to hear. Like, we were just watching that episode of Ted Lasso and, like, Ted's talking to his ex-wife or whatever and he's, like, getting some off his chest. And it's, like, this may not be the best thing for you to hear, but if I don't say this, it's going to swallow me alive. And sometimes those are necessary things yeah. where it's, like... You do this and it drives me fucking insane. How do we fix this? And it's just like you you figure out a solution that works for both sides. Yeah. And I will say like recently we had a conversation where I was like, hey, like this is how I'm feeling. Can we talk about it? And you were like, yeah. And this is how I'm feeling. Can we talk about it? And we like sat down and we just like voiced our thoughts. And it was like completely fine. And like we felt better about it. And it was not a fight or like a blow up argument yeah. like it just is never going to be like that because I mean us. you only you only live your own life so it's like that's where it's like, even going back to like 2019 where it's like I could see where you perceive that you're in one way and I perceived it in such a different way because I was so busy and go 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 I was living my life right you were living in a different way and looking at it in a different perspective mm-hmm. and it's the same thing with those types of things where it's just like you need to sometimes just voice ha- how it looks on your end yeah and you need to be able to like hear the other person's side and hear the other person's perspective two ears one mouth you gotta listen twice as much as you talk yeah biggest icks with each other oh I know yours what well it's not really with me it's more so my current apartment why the lack of light okay so TJ's yes it's not really like about you though exactly I'm glad to hear you say that it's just an ick with because you yell at me about it yeah because it's dumb but um so TJ is a he's in a two bedroom apartment and like the guest room has a ceiling fan with a light on the fan, but for some reason his main room uh, has a ceiling fan with no light, and he has mm, within the last when did you get that little lamp? I got it within four months of moving to five this place. six months he got this lamp, so we would walk We've into the room at and night and it'd be dark. Like, it would be so dark you couldn't see. If only we and had And the a... lamp's on the other side of the room, and he didn't connect it to the light switch. So, like, you can't even walk in the room and flick the light switch on. You have to, like, walk to the other end of the room to turn the lamp on. Ick. <laughs> <laughs> You're a punk. And it's stupid. But, um, I don't think I really have big icks with you. If I have an ick with you, I kind of tell you what it is, and then, like, you stop doing it. <laughs> so you're a bully. My biggest ick with you is you bite your nails. There it is. My biggest ick with you is you stress me out and therefore I bite my nails. <laughs> Shut up. No, it's my big... I don't think I have an ick with you, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. I'm perfect. 100%. Oh my God, thanks. Okay. How do you feel like you guys complement each other or balance each other out? Ooh, that's a good, kind of a good question. Hmm. I mean, I think it, I mean, I think it works in a lot of ways. You're, you're, you're probably the more talkative of the two and I'm... I'm a good listener, and um, you're a really good cook, and I'm a really good eater. Um, and what else? What about our actual like personality traits? I mean, I think we're similar in a lot of ways, but you know, some of those pieces just kind of fall together. Like we're both sweet and caring and empathetic, you know. Mm. I think we balance each other out in a lot of ways. I think we are very similar, but there are things that differentiate differentiate us, which make us like a good pair. Mm-hmm. I would say I'm pretty outgoing. I'm very talkative. I love meeting new people. Yeah, and you're an extrovert's extrovert. Yes, I'm an extrovert. And then, like, you're an, an introverted extrovert. I think I'm an extroverted introvert. Whatever. Like, you can be super extroverted at times, and you do like meeting people a lot, but you also love your alone time. You love being by yourself. I love when people leave me alone. <laughs> you love when people, like, stop blowing up your phone. Oh, like, yeah. No, yeah, I'm like, sorry. so you, you kind of have two sides to you, whereas, like, I love being around people. I love yeah. being, like, in social situations. Um... So with that, like we, that right there, like we are similar, but like there is a little bit of a difference. Yeah. Um, I would say you're like super nerdy and smart and I'm not. (laughs) So cool and dumb. Um, what? Are you calling me cool? (laughs) Um, but yeah, I think like. There's like little small things, right? Yeah, but even that kind of like gives us a little bit of a buffer. Like I, 
look forward to the days when we live together and it's like you have you need to catch up on your housewives and it's like okay well i have my sports podcast i need to listen to so let's go into different yeah like the game's on you can go watch your housewives like no you watch the housewives i watch the game yeah that's what i said no you said you go watch the housewives you can't make i'm talking like as i'm you oh okay gotcha gotcha. don't worry i'm gonna make you watch housewives uh, i've already done it enough in my life you've never done it i what i was just watching a reunion show summer house i barely even watched summer house well i did it okay (laughs) Um, <laughs> do you call or text more? I mean, throughout the day, we probably text more. The meat of the conversation is probably in, on the phone, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I would feel I feel like unless something something that because I feel like unless something big happened, our texts are very like, "What are you up to? What are you working on? Where are you at?" Often, if like something juicy happens, you just text, remind me to tell you about. Yeah, like, like next time we talk. Yeah. So like our real like beef of the conversations come from FaceTimes and phone calls and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to start recording our FaceTime so people can hear them. Okay. You're a really good talker. You know, me. you can like, why? Because you don't say one word in like five minutes. <laughs> I just want to. TJ, sometimes you really do talk on FaceTime. Like, I know I do sometimes. You're making me out to be the villain right now. I don't appreciate it. You're not a villain. <laughs> <laughs> um... Wait, what was I going to say? Oh, you know that they can leave FaceTime voicemails now, right? Yeah. The new update. Crazy. I would love that. Anyways, okay. Next question. How do you keep things fun? Well, I mean, I think we've had, we have so many experiences we still haven't even done yet. Like, I mean, that's, that's life. I mean, there's so many things that we still need to do. Like, we haven't gone on a boat together. We are going abroad for the first time later this year. Um, Together. Yeah, together. And we want to go out west, too. And it's like, we have so many things that we, I mean, we're really just getting started. So that's how we keep it fun. But I'm also like a simplistic person that like, as much as I look forward to like, when we go out and do stuff and see friends and whatnot, like, chilling and watching Incredibles too. like, last night was fucking great. Like, that's, that's. That's totally up my alley, too. So I'm happy doing a lot. I'm happy doing a little, which uh, always keeps me happy. So. Yeah, I think um, we're definitely with the whole scheduling thing. Like, we're big on, like, planning something. So we always like to have something to look forward to to do together. And this year, it seems like a lot of those things are not in our... Um, we didn't choose to do those things. They're like yeah. celebrations that we're all going. Plans like, made for us, right? Yeah, plans were made weddings, for us. Weddings, it's yeah. But again, like those are some things that like we're going together. We're like planning to do this. We have to buy this, like yeah, stuff like that. But I think within our relationship, we always try to do like, especially when we visit each other, we typically visit each other like for weeks on like at a time. Yeah. So like I'll come to see him for about a week or like four to five days, um, and then vice versa. So like within that week or within that time frame. We plan at least one or two date nights where it's just us. We leave, we go to like a new restaurant or we go see a movie or um, we do like an activity together. Something that like we're leaving to do, we're, you know, dressing up for or like have to drive to or do something like that. Like I think finding time for each other, like it's super nice and important. Um, I think we're going to have to find that kind of balance too once we do like move in together because it's like we're going to be together all the time like every day's a date but like it's not like yeah. i think we're still gonna want to like prioritize leaving the house and doing date nights and like oh you're a plan. fun little thing oh you're a plan i'm gonna have to have to take you outside which i mean that's the other thing is like you're really yeah, he calls me a plant yeah you're really simple you're like you're you're not hard to, to please like we go on a walk and you get some sunshine and you're a happy happy yeah. camper or we go out and order takeout food or we go out to a nice place to go eat and you're happy so you're happy when we do just about anything too so you're kind of like me in that regard where it's just like easy to please just happy to be with one another and Mm -hmm. we have a good blend of like we do stuff and then when it's like dude i don't feel like doing anything can we just please do nothing stay in bed all day right right like what was the one week oh it was what we have off that monday we we literally had a monday off we were like I cannot leave this bed. I, I am too what comfortable. What did we do? We were like so... We drank so much the day before. Yeah, that, that whole weekend we had plans with friends and family and whatnot. And then it got to a day where we had an off day and it was like, I need to do nothing. What day was that? I can't remember. It was earlier this summer. But but like that's that kind of is perfectly... Memorial Day. Exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we just were like, can we do nothing? It was great. I also think like we are pretty like lighthearted people. Like we like to, we like pick on each other a little bit, like out of fun and like keep things like funny and like light. I think that's also important mm-hmm. to not like take yourself so seriously all the time. Yeah. Um, 
especially when like you're doing all these big adult things like it feels like sometimes like life can feel very heavy and like you can feel bogged down from like work and life and just everything that you have to do it's just nice to like have somebody that you can be like yourself around and silly, just be, goofy like, with. silly yeah. Yeah, yeah um i think that's super important too cool um what was the hardest lesson that you've learned from a long your long distance relationship Hmm. Hardest lesson. This is a tough question because I feel like for the most part, this has been, I don't want to say easy because it's definitely not been easy. Um, but we've sort of managed it in a very good way. But I will say something about like a long distance relationship is that you have to sort of realize that, and I guess in any relationship, that there's a whole another person that you need to like, prioritize and focus on and make important in your life you can't be saying this answer because that, that dang it you took my answer not, do i no have to think of something else no way wait well, finish and so yeah. i feel like especially in a long distance relationship you have to make sort of an extra effort to prioritize that person or make them feel special because they're not next to you they're not just down the street they're not living with you so i think it takes like a little bit more umph, like you have to do a little bit more to make them feel seen. I don't know if that's like necessarily the hardest lesson, but that's definitely something that I've had to like prioritize in this relationship sure. is like making you feel like you're loved and seen and heard and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, copycat took my answer. Uh, really? It's it's very yeah, pretty much along the same lines. And again, I don't know if it's the biggest lesson, but it's I know the lesson it's part the, is what's throwing me off. It's the thing I keep in my head the most. Yes. Yeah, so it's like as much every time you think you've had you you have enough empathy, you gotta find you gotta find some more. You gotta be able to push that. And then same thing with selflessness. Like you just gotta be able to like prioritize that other person. A lot of the same stuff that you were just saying. It's like you just have to take into account what's been going on in their day. It's not just your world that you're living in. You have to think about what they've gone through in a day and if they wanna talk on the phone for an hour to get it off their chest, then okay, so be it. Or you know, something might have happened in their family and you have a completely different day and you just got to be able to take that into account and put yourself into their shoes which i mean i we could do this about anybody not just yeah. a relationship which i find myself continuously reminding myself uh specifically when i'm behind a wheel I've, everyone's an idiot when <laughs> i'm driving around them and they're not driving fast enough so it's still something i'm obviously working on but within a relationship i just think it's like yeah key to just even if you think you're already doing enough that 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 seeds the foundation for complacency Yes. And being able to push that a little bit further and it's like, all right, well, I know she's had a different day or I know today's been tough or today's been hard on me, but she's had a really exciting day and I need to be there to support her and continue to build that up or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, so, yeah, trying to push yourself even more to that unselfless or selflessness direction and more and more, you know, empathy in your life uh, you know, make a better relationship, but also make you a better person. So, um, yeah. No, I totally agree. I think it's like you could say that for any anybody. I just think it's a little bit more emphasized when you're not near that person or you're doing long distance. And also, like I will say, we are very lucky in the sense that our distance of a relationship has been only two to three hours. And then like that one summer, oh, it was totally. six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like there are a lot of couples that are getting on planes and seeing their significant other and like I almost had to do that remember when you were going to go to Colorado that was crazy yeah, it was but crazy. um stuff like that I just think at the end of the day like you're not the only person in this relationship and you have to like kind of see that um and just make sure that the other person is like feeling heard and seen and loved and prioritized yeah and I mean we all want to and, and it, it's a tough thing to it's a fine line to walk because we all want to be prioritized. So then to prioritize someone else. Yeah. Like you get to a point where it's just like, well, what about me? You know? And mm -hmm. again, you gotta be able to push that further, further along and just know by prioritizing that other person, they are in turn prioritizing right, you that's and that's how say. you'll get that back. Yeah. I think like, it's like the golden rule, like treat others how you want to be treated. And I think yeah. in a relationship, especially in our relationship, like I feel very respected. I feel very supported. I feel very heard. So, like, I do my best to, like, give all of those traits back to you because that's what you're giving me. Yeah. And yeah. you do a great job. Oh, my God. Thanks. What qualities do you feel like are important to have in a healthy relationship? Uh, I mean, yeah, communication immediately comes to mind. The selflessness, the empathy has got to be there. Um, other traits and qualities. 
you mentioned being able to keep it light, being humorous. Everyone has their own versions of humor, but finding that, you know, in your relationship, I think is good. Um, what are those events? What are those things that y'all both look forward to doing and being able to keep that in your life? Keep dating, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, what other qualities? Be honest. Be forthright. Yeah. Forthright? Forthcoming. Whatever. Forthcoming? Yeah, forthcoming. Be upfront. You're forthcoming with information? Yeah, of just be upfront. No. Um, and yeah, I mean, the whole point of a relationship is, I mean, life's fucking hard, man. I mean, life is really, really hard to go through by yourself. So that's the advantage of having someone else in your life. And uh, you know, don't keep things to yourself that are going to eat you alive. I mean, I think that's just imperative for your mental health. And I mean, when you have someone else who can lean on, you can lean on not only like emotionally, but who knows, they might be able to have an answer for you or they might be able to help you out. And, you know, sharing that burden, I think that's another important quality, being the real true version of yourself and, um, uh, not hiding things from your significant other makes your life easier and also makes your relationship stronger. Mm-hmm. I think those are all great responses. Great cool. answers. I probably missed something. What do you think? Qualities that you feel like are important to have in a healthy relationship. One person needs to be good I at think, math. No, I'm playing. No, healthy though. I'm trying to focus on the healthy. No, for yeah. sure though. <laughs> and guess who it's not? Me. I think that in order to have a healthy relationship, you should, I like, this is like so annoying because everyone says this, but like an open line of communication, like that's what you were saying. Like communication is definitely the number one answer. And like this can go like multiple ways. I think like if you think back to like maybe a relationship that you had that wasn't super healthy or that was pretty toxic, I think back to certain relationships where I knew I was withholding my feelings because I was like, number one, afraid to say how I felt or afraid to be myself didn't want to be like ridiculed for things that I was going to say or um you know I didn't want to cause problems or whatever it was like I never felt like I could be like a hundred percent myself and so I think like if you start off a relationship with having a healthy line of communication or being there for the other person there they're there for you I think that's super important like I've never felt like I couldn't come to you about things. Yeah. Like I tell you about friendships or life stuff or, you know, like whatever it is, or just like personal shit that I'm like going through that I'm like, I have to talk about this cause I don't know what to do. Like you're there to listen and you're there to help. And, um, I know that there are times that like people don't feel like comfortable enough to do that. And I think like that is right there. Like what you should have in yeah. order to maintain a healthy relationship is be able to like be a hundred percent yourself around somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, drop that wall and have full transparency. I mean, I I can also speak to, you know, personal, you know, experience. I've lived in a relationship where I had to be two different versions of myself, the one that she wanted me to be and then the one that I truly am, and that would sometimes create some conflict when we were with friends because I could be myself around my best friends and whatnot, mm-hmm. and then she'd be like, what the hell are you doing? You're embarrassing me or whatever, and it's like, well, I'm just being silly, goofy teach, you know? It's just, you know, who I am, and I'm way more of a goober than I think he probably ever thought <laughs> I could be when we first started talking, so... You know, but being able to drop that wall and be comfortable with the other person makes your life that much easier to live and it'll make your life that much happier and more rich. Yeah. Yeah, I think it just it's super beneficial for both parties. Totally. Like it's just a nice thing to have. And also like you were saying, like life is hard. It's nice to have somebody that's like in your corner all the time. Yeah, totally. Like supporting you, cheering you on, being there for you no matter what. Like at the end of the day, like people get in relationships for all different reasons. Like people get in relationships because they like can't be alone or they are running away from something. So they're running towards a relationship or whatever it is. Um, get in the relationship for the right reasons and like start it off in a healthy way. Because if you started off with no line of communication or you're pretending to be somebody you're not, like it's just never going, like if you started off that way, it'll never change. Like you'll never be able to get out of that shell of a person that you are in that relationship. Yeah. It'll just, be a continuous uphill climb like yeah. oh, I need to keep acting like this to be able to keep them around and yeah, yeah yeah and I think like when we got in our relationship like we had conversations of like I want to be able to talk to you and like I want it just kind of like happened naturally too um and I think that's like been very nice and I think that's why we've been able to like handle so many hiccups or road bumps and stuff is because like at the end of the day like we support each other and we're there for each other and we are able to talk about whatever it is um, and so I think we owe that to like communication. Absolutely. And also like, look at a calendar. I mean, like as annoying as we maybe are about like, okay, when am I going to see you next? But even like when you're living together, like 
I think it's good to be able to be like, okay, well, this is this person's wedding, so like we have that to look forward to. And you, you're just constantly keeping yourself busy with events. And it's like, okay, we don't have anything that weekend. Do you want to go catch a baseball game? Or do you want to go make a beach trip? Or, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, live in a calendar, make some events, and keep it spicy, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Keep it spicy. Keep it lively. Keep it spicy. Um, do you have any advice for people that are getting into a relationship that's like initially already long distance? Yeah, that's the other big advantage we had. Is like we knew we clicked for three years, and then we went distance. Um, that's a tough one. I mean, one I would just like keep in the back of your mind. What made you want to commit to that? Like, what made you interested in the first place? Mm. And as long as you keep that reminder alive, remember your why. How many times have I said that to you? Remember your why, um, and you always have a cause for a motivation. Um, yeah, communication is a big thing. Um, find your little things that. I don't know, feel y'all like we do FaceTimes, but some people it's like uh, voice messages or whatever, and it's like that's how they get to check in and talk and get to tell their jokes or whatever. And some people it's like Snapchat or, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, lean on that, you know, lean on what works for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that is definitely a nice thing that we had was we kind of created a foundation of our relationship before we had to end up doing long distance. So we like, knew the ins and outs of each other and how we worked as people, how we communicated as people, how we like texted and called and like we figured out sort of a system before we jumped into long distance. So we carried that system over and kind of didn't even question it. We just kind of did it. Mm -hmm. Um, I know some people that initially got into relationship in, it was long distance, like at the jump. Yeah. And, like, it crumbled because they weren't able to have the foundation of, like, setting it up and making sure that, like, things were good before this happened. But I like what you said is, like, figure out what's going to work for you, like, as soon as that happens. Like, make sure you have sort of a system because the only way to continue long distance is it's almost like a routine. It's like yeah. we have a routine of, like... We text in the morning, hey, good morning, like, what do you have today? Like, we, we know pretty much when the other one's going to go to the gym. Yeah, like, we, then... we know what's going on, and we know what the, te- like, so we have sort of a routine, and then it's like, okay, like, it's been, like, three days, like, do you want to FaceTime tonight? Like, do you want to catch yeah. up? And then, like, okay, in two weeks I see you. Like, we sort of just have this routine down, and, like, again, that's because we've been doing it for so long, but I think, like, finding that early on, if this is something you're jumping into, is, like, very important otherwise like especially for me like for a woman like in a woman's perspective we overthink everything um especially when you're getting in a relationship like you're gonna think like okay why hasn't he texted me yet well like did you guys already communicate that like you want to text all the time during the day because there's some guys that like straight up don't text and it's not because they like hate you it's because they're just not texters and like maybe he'll call you at lunch or he'll call you at dinner like there are different things that you have to sort of communicate. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting by your phone and you're going to be upset and you're going to be overthinking, like, is he talking to somebody else? Does he not like me anymore? Like, you're going to be questioning all of these things. Um, so I think, like, setting up, like, a system in place at the beginning is super important. Yeah, and, I mean, finding ways to make that other person feel like they're a priority in your life. Like, I know we used to send songs to each other all the time. Like, anytime an Old Dominion song would come on and be like, thinking about yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah and so like little things like that or especially when you first start dating and like that person's the only thing on your mind like I could see a breadcrumb and be like Elena likes garlic bread <laughs> oh my god that's it's oh like god, Elena's here <laughs> yeah I know I miss her it's but like, like she's with me yeah if y'all like text or if y'all snapchat or whatever the case may be like send them that you know send them the link, yeah. a screenshot of the song coming on and be like made me think of you or whatever and it's just little things like that it doesn't have to be a great big grand gesture but just letting them know that they're on your mind and they're a priority and a focal point in your life. Yeah. yeah, because it's definitely easier when you have sort of the foundation going in and we are lucky to have that, but yeah. communicating what you want out of this long distance relationship I think is important. Like telling your significant other like what you need out of it and asking them what they need out of it and that's the only way that you can be like fully successful is if you're both giving each other what the other needs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then like small, cu- small, small cute gestures are nice. Um, letting the other person know you're thinking of them, like little things like that are, are, um, always nice to hear and stuff too. Yeah. Okay. So I think that was about it for the questions. Thank you guys so much for sending those in. Um, we really appreciate them. We love those questions and, um, hopefully those answers helped. 
Yeah, hopefully. Um, gave you a little bit perspective on like where we're at, what long distance is like, um, all that fun stuff. But we uh, wanted to do, we wanted to do this episode um, one because you guys had been asking, but we felt like we should do it now because we are kind of shifting into a new chapter um, together, which is moving in with each other, which is super exciting. And um, it's been a long time coming, obviously. And I'm really excited. I think we both have been living, like, very independent lives while also, like, merging them as much as possible. And now we're going to be able to, like, merge our lives together fully and um, have our own place. And we're just really excited for that. So, um, any thoughts on the move-in? Yeah, obviously super excited. One, it's a place that we both really enjoy and have a lot of fun in, so that's exciting. It's yeah. it's really awesome for me because I get back closer to my family and all my friends. I'm not like in a two-hour bubble secluded by myself, so it'll be good to have like more of a social life again um, and get the chance to move in with you and get to be goofy silly every day. I can't wait. Goofy silly? Yeah, silly goofy, goofy silly. <laughs> same, same, but different. Yeah, and I'm really excited because... Our apartment, it's kind of funny when we were touring apartments in this yeah, area. Yeah, our apartment kicks ass, too. That's awesome. Yeah, when we were touring apartments in this area, we kept touring basically the same things of, like, shoe boxes, like, tiny apartments. Closets. <laughs> yeah, like, t- just ridiculous. And then, like, super freaking expensive for, like, no space. And then it's like, and oh, I've and then you're also these... paying for this amenity and that parking yeah. and then this. And, and I'm coming from a house. Like, I live in a house with four, three girls and, like, you have a two-bedroom, two-bath. Like, we're both coming from, like, a good amount of space to now being like, oh, we want to live together? Let's go smaller? No. So we ended up coming across another apartment and we, I remember we did, like, a tour. We did, like, three in one day and it was the last one. I yeah, remember it's a good one to end on. We pulled into the parking lot and I looked at you and I was like, if this doesn't work, I'm going to have a freak out. Um, like, cause this is the one I'm really banking on. Yeah. And we walked in and I just remember like we were in the apartment and you looked back. I mean, I looked at you and we were both like, Oh my God. <laughs> and you know, the guys they're giving us a tour and we're just like looking at her like, Oh my God, this is perfect. Yeah. Like, we liked it so much. great. Yeah. We liked it so much that I, I should have asked more questions like about yeah. like what all goes into But we were just so excited and like so giddy. I was trying to take videos yeah, exactly. and photos and we basically like looked at him and we were like, we want this place. Like what's the process? Like what do we do? And yeah, we got really lucky. We got the unit that we wanted and um, the layout and everything. So we're excited. And I think it'll be like a fun next chapter of like being together and living in a new spot. Like you only, you lived here for like two months that one summer, like actual in the city. Oh, so I'm like, excited. Yeah, it was like four months, but yeah. yeah so yeah, I'm still. excited to like be there with you fully and. I don't know. It'll be it'll be a fun time. It'll be a good little switch up. No more distant. Now I feel like we're barely gonna text, barely Facetime. Like, what is that gonna look like? It's gonna be great. I'm so excited. I know it's so crazy. Um, any final thoughts on maintaining a healthy relationship, maintaining a long distance relationship, um, our relationship? Anything you wanna say before we wrap it up? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, yeah empathize prioritize uh, and make events and always listen and communicate with one another that would be my advice and uh luckily enough i've got that (laughs) you're the biggest dork i know no the biggest come on now the biggest no there's gotta be bigger dorks um well thank you so much for coming on today and chatting yeah thanks for having me hopefully my answers at least help maybe one person Maybe. maybe maybe thank you guys all for asking your questions and sending them in we really appreciate it and hopefully this helped a little bit but yeah looking forward to the next chapter with you love you love you too okay thanks for listening bye Hey guys, thanks so much for listening. Be sure to subscribe to Girl We Gotta Talk on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. That way you never miss a new episode. You can also follow Girl We Gotta Talk on Instagram at Girl We Gotta Talk Podcast and on Twitter at GWGT Podcast for live tweeting and all your favorite pop culture updates. If you want to watch full episodes, check out Girl We Gotta Talk on YouTube and find all of your favorite episodes over there. If you like today's episode, head over to Apple Podcasts, hit the five stars or leave a review and let me know what you thought. I seriously love hearing your feedback. It really means the world to me. Thank you guys again so much for listening. Talk to you guys next week. Bye.